got a question for you. I always have questions. How quick are you, or how quick are we, to judge another person's actions? If you want a title, call it How Do We Judge? Righteous Evaluation or Righteous or Self-Righteousness. Let's turn to 1 Samuel 16.7. It says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man sees at the out, or looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Let's give you, I'm going to give you like four short stories here, and then we'll go back and analyze them here in a few minutes. A teenage brother and sister are standing in the middle of their newly remodeled kitchen. There's water and glass all over the brand new kitchen floor. Put yourself in this place. You're the one that's observing these things. Okay. Second, a man comes staggering out of a tavern, hardly able to stand up. Uh, we've seen that a few times, probably. But Three, Another man running out of a strip joint at the edge of town with several other people chasing him. Just picture in your mind all these things. We'll come back to it later. Yet now, an unmarried woman, 30-something, really nice lady, almost knocks her down coming around the corner from a women's health clinic, has been known to give abortions. Got your attention yet? You are the one who witnessed these people. You know them personally. You even go to church together with some of them. And some of you know better than others. <clears throat> or at least you thought you did. Okay. You've heard the saying, if they look guilty, they've got to be guilty, right? Look at his face. <laughs> Look at the fear in her eyes. They are all guilty as sin, right? No, not so fast. What to do? Do you confront them? Ignore the situation? Or appoint yourself judge, jury of one man and pronounce them guilty of a major offense or possibly go to the minister to plead your case. Of course, these are all fictitious stories, scenarios. And for the sake of thinking out of the box, to get a clearer picture of things, let's take a look at the facts. Now, of course, now the facts are fictitious as well, because the stories are fictitious. But it makes good thinking for you. Remember, you are the witness. After the fact. So let's know, now get the backstory for each of these stories. There's always a back, always a backstory for anything you see or hear. <clears throat> and a lot of times when you hear something, you hear it second, third hand, so you don't get the whole whole picture. Well, scenario number one: a teenage brother and sister are standing in the middle of the newly remodeled kitchen. There's water and glass all over the brand new kitchen floor. You walk in from the garage, having just gotten home from work, and having told the kids earlier before you left this morning, they, <clears throat> they couldn't eat anything until dinner, and not to be scuffling in the house. They just came in the front door about a minute before you did. And notice there's water coming from under the kitchen sink. I was trying to clean the water up when the boy slips. He falls. They're trying to clean up the water. In the process of him falling, he knocks off the glass that you had left on the kitchen counter and breaks the glass. 
because you was in a hurry rushing out the door to go to work. His look was a look of shock, having just met the floor coming up at him. Her look was fear. The fear was thinking he might have injured himself. Both thinking, rightly so, you would blame them, be upset with them. Scenario number two. A man comes staggering out of the tavern, hardly able to stand up. Not knowing how, how, the, what he works at, works in an air, air conditioning company and a plumber technician, was overcome by toxic fumes and was rushing out to get some fresh air. You assumed he had been drinking, and you wouldn't do that. Scenario number three. Another man running out of the strip club at the edge of town. That's usually where they are. So, yeah, you know, get far away so you can't get out of the edge of town, you know. <clears throat> With several other people chasing him. Well, he had been driving by when he saw billowing smoke coming from the back of the building, not caring what the, what the establishment was, and was warning those inside that the building was on fire. You're not really observing anything. Didn't notice the smoke coming from the back of the building, as he had. But you decided in your mind that he was up to some kind of unsavory behavior. Scenario number four. Yet now, this really nice, unmarried, 30-something woman almost knocks you over coming around the corner from the woman's health club that is known for performing abortions. <clears throat> Were her on her way home, having just delivered the payroll to the comptroller, from the comptroller for the week from her accounting firm, was on her way home. You contriving in your mind all kinds of things that could be going on with this lady. You thought you knew her really well, right? thinking she had gotten herself in some kind of trouble and needed to get help that you would not approve of. <clears throat> what would or what should you do? Here's a true story. The reason I know it is true because I was there and I did not read it on the internet. Okay? 1981. Eugene, Oregon. The local church would catch chickens. You can't get away from those chickens, can you? For a fundraiser for YOU. That's the equivalent to UYC, I think it is today. One of the young men that worked, left his coat in the car he was riding in the night before. The, the other person, an older teen or young adult, that had had the coat was nice and brought the coat to the other young teen. Upon arriving... At the house, he knocks on the door. The young teen's dad comes to the door, puffing on a cigarette. Okay. The one who brought the coat back was in a quandary. What does he do? You know, thinking that the dad was baptized, and baptized members don't smoke. But he wasn't at that time. His, da his dad, the other young man's dad, was an elder in the church. Should he go home and tell his dad what he had observed? Or what should he do? Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3, 7. The last half of the verse. It's a time to keep silent and a time to speak. We all know those times now. We, we've been in those situations. What did he do? He did nothing but prayed. A few months down the road, he comes home, and his mother is getting ready to go out, and he asks her, where are you going? And she tells him, says, I'm going to Mr. Jackson's baptism. Well, by this time, I had quit smoking. Okay. <laughs> He was so relieved that he had not said anything. 
Afterward, he came to me and told me the whole story and was happy I was baptized. He did the right thing by not jumping to unsubstantiated conclusions. Sometimes the th best thing we can do, if we don't have all the facts, is nothing. Here are some things to think about what to do, though. First, nothing. Usually these things will work themselves out. The other person involved will be talking to you or someone else and say, hey, guess what happened yesterday or whenever it happened? Or I saw you the other day, but I didn't have time to stop and talk. I was running away from a fire or whatever the situation might be at the time. First Peter, I'll just read this, uh, 4, 15 and 17 says, Let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody. This is what caused busybodies. They see something and they try to pass on some juicy information. That's a busybody. Verse 17, For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, will all be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Second, pray about it. Matthew 5, and 45. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you, or those who offend you, and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his Son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. It is all in his hands. Third, go to them in peace. In a peaceful manner to sort out what really happened. Sometimes you just need to ask, you know. This same principle applies in Matthew 5, 22 to 24. Let's go to 22. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, a hateful attitude, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says to you, fool, shall be in danger of hellfire, the second death. In verse 23, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother or you have something against the other, leave your gift before the altar and go be reconciled to your brother and then come off your gift. This is usually, some, usually something that will, uh, a scripture will use around the Passover time, but it's, it's applicable any time. Yes, you can do nothing, which in most cases is the prudent thing to do. Then you may also talk to the other person involved in a loving desire to help if needed. But no matter what you do, you should always pray first about it before you end up causing more hurt or harm than help. As Romans 15, 1, through 1 and 2 says, or, We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak, not to please ourselves. Let each one of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. In other words, love your neighbor more than growing self-righteousness. Remembering that God loves us more. Remember Matthew 7, 1 and 2. It says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Put another way, what goes around comes around. Now continuing in Romans 15, we're going to verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Jesus Christ that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. <clears throat> yes, brethren, we need to put the love of God, put, put on the love of God. We can in, indeed evaluate 
but let us not judge in haste. And remember, pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you.